Hey everyone, welcome. It is GMI Hub online, but actually it's a special one. It's Music Makers Meetup, which we normally don't have on uh, online right That's now. That's right, we don't do it usually live. We usually have a meeting of people in person and uh, we talk about music writing and uh, some artists may come with songs that are sort of finished and some are kind of ideas, concepts, and we help build upon that. And that's not happening tonight. We're doing something really cool. No, we actually have a special guest tonight who's going to talk to us about music publishing. But before we introduce him, let's do our normal little housekeeping. Yes, right. Hey, well, <laughs> welcome so, so much. So glad to have you guys on uh, GMI Hub online. We have our website, gmihub.ca. Go check it out. Find out more about us there. Also, on the socials, we're all there. We're on every single one, including X, so there's something for you to check out. And uh, we would love to hear from you. And how we do that is by simply going to our website, gmihub.ca, and you'll see there's a connect button there. Click on there, let us know your email, and we will actually journey with you. If you have any questions, if you have any um, situations or concerts, you got performances coming up, let us know. Because we will love to let everybody know because we have a hub happening. It goes out once a month to all those people who are on our email list, and we will help promote your events or your albums or whatever you're doing. So, new releases. Yeah, your new, your new releases. We want to be there for you guys, okay? So you can help us and we'll help you on this journey together. What do you think? Because we are better together. Amen, sister. Right? <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Did we do it all? We're good? We're doing it all. We're, We're done. All right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Now to introduce our special guest. Uh, this gentleman is um, multi-talented. He is a worship leader, songwriter, producer, and most of all, a music uh, publisher, and we're tapping into the music publisher side of him. Mm -hmm. um, this is Duncan Boudreau. Did I say your name right? Yeah. I Boudreau. love it with the French side, huh? <laughs> Boudreau. <laughs> Boudreau. Um, uh, Duncan, welcome. He is actually a worship pastor in a church in Brampton. Yes. Right? Um, and I'll get the name wrong, so I'm not going to try and say it. <laughs> That's right, uh, North Bramley United Church. North, North Bramley, Bramley I was gonna United. Say North Brampton. Okay, I was awesome. going to say it wrong. <laughs> um, and we are so thrilled to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's yeah. it's like we've met once before. I had a little bit of an interview before mm -hmm. in another situation. And then it seemed like we never crossed paths. And no. then, boom, we crossed paths again. <laughs> so yeah. it's so awesome to have you here. And I was delighted to learn about this music publishing side because, believe it or not, we've had artists come to us going, mm. I wish there was... Um, a, a Christian music publisher we can go to. I wish mm. there was a Christian studio we can go to. I think they, everyone's yeah, asking yeah. these sort of things because even though there's a lot of studios and a lot of publishers, mm -hmm. not everybody is comfortable with just going everywhere. Yes. They want to go with like-minded people. So it's awesome that people get to meet you. And we need to pick your brain. Well, <laughs> I, I'd, li I'd like to know first, before we keep going into that direction, which is great, is like, tell us a bit about what got you into this publishing thing and what what really motivated you to start doing this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my business partner and I, uh, we've been producing music together for like over a decade, um, which is really cool and cool to grow up and, you know, come up with somebody like that. And uh, we started doing that as a service for people and as we were making music with these people who were very young and talented uh you know the the age-old problem comes up where usually the talent is uh a lot more plentiful than the money available to pay the skills needed to really realize that and you crafted so, that very well by the way yeah yeah it, it, it really is an issue right and mm -hmm. and um you know i don't think that issue is going away anytime soon and so what usually happens in those kinds of situations and anybody who's in the music world knows this is that you take you know um, a big cut on what you're paid up front in compensation for like more back end, mm -hmm. right? You take, you take a little bit of the publishing and you agree on how much you're going to take there or you take a little bit of the master ownership. And so we started to do that and it just accepted that that was kind of the reality of what we wanted because we didn't have a portfolio. We didn't have any production to our name. And so we right. needed to do that. But, um, you know, doing it properly, we really started to like, you know, make sure lawyers were involved with like uh, drafting up our contracts and stuff. And while we were deliberating over how we were going to structure the business, it became really clear to us that by us taking that percentage, it would be way more productive for us to actually own it as a publishing company so that we could represent it mm -hmm. and represent the music rather than just like own it as individuals who, because, because when you're, when you own something as an, as an individual, right, if you, if you get 
a publishing split of a, of a song, I mean, you can promote it yourself, I guess, but you're really just like a receiver, right? Like, you, you, there's not really much you can do, like, in ter- because you don't have any control over the song. Mm. So you mm. can't take it to opportunities and tell someone, hey, I own the song, you should really do something about it. And so that was a big thing. That was a big realization for us. And so uh, we structure our company like a publishing company. And so we are like, a f- you know, officially a publishing company, like a registered publishing company with SoCan. And uh, uh, it's just allowed us to start engaging in, in a lot more fruitful conversations with the idea of being able to advocate for the songs that we create um, and also take on other artists catalog and advocate for them. But uh, yeah, it's been a really interesting. It wasn't what we expected to be doing, but here we are. The so. great, the great thing I think that you have personally is that that you're an artist yourself, yes. and and it's 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 different when you have someone who who's a musician, an artist, uh, a creative themselves, who's looking at somebody else that can appreciate what they're doing as an artist, and therefore your representation of them is probably m- uh, more of a consideration of who they are as an artist. Exactly, yeah. and and it's it is an important thing to balance. Like I'll be honest with you, like I think, you know you have two ends of the spectrum that really um, cause a detriment and either do where Mm. you have the side of like the corporate side of it that truly does just see a song as an asset um, and as a way to make money and completely disregards like the artists like humanness and their ability. But then you have the other side where you have the artists who see songs as purely art. And unfortunately in a, like a capitalistic society you do have to figure out a way to monetize and kind of create value and so mm. trying to strike that balance is difficult and yeah. you know that's kind of what we've set out to do so what does a typical day look like for you like in, in terms of the publishing side like right yeah what does that look like um a lot of emails <laughs> <laughs> wow i can relate to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> honestly i mean like i so a lot of emails scheduling scheduling writing sessions like mm-hmm. that's a big thing for us is like making sure that the people that we're kind of affiliated with or that are kind of signed with us or that we represent our um our continuing to write more we want our catalog to grow and so we are kind of in the room writing we just had a big writing session this weekend um and so uh yeah so organizing writing sessions lots of emails um and uh um and and they're just like weird odds and ends stuff too i mean like as a publishing company right like you're you're you are owning chunks of what are assets like your your song is in and and you know make no mistake that is the biggest asset that you have and so um like as an artist and so um we're also just trying to like i'm i just got on a call i had a call today with an artist that we uh we represent and um uh he got his first live show so we're like you know just going through i'm like I've had to put my like music director hat on and be like, all right, like I'm going to reach out to some players. Like, like, let's get some stuff moving. Um, and so it's a lot of odds and ends, but all with the pursuit of like maximizing the success of the songs that you represent and like anything adjacent to that. So this is not a nine to five deal. Oh no, no, (laughs) no, no, definitely not. And it's sporadic, you know, like, like uh, there, there are days where, especially thankfully, um, uh, you know, uh, there are other things that I do. I'm a mix engineer and I'm also a music producer. And so, um, you know, it's like <laughs> there just kind of comes in these waves of work that need to get yeah. done. You know, like we had to, uh, we're in negotiations right now for a catalog of an artist and, and uh, they sent in this big long email, you know, listing a bunch of scenarios and stuff that, that might, um, you know, might or might not be applicable to kind of, kind of our, you know, our, our publishing deal. And, um, uh, you know, so it's like, okay, I guess that's what all day this day is going to be like crafting of right. a big like mm-hmm. response with a legend refer to, you know, anyway. So it's like it's a lot of that for sure. Um, but, you know, I ideally that as we grow, um, that can be outsourced <laughs> that that the boring work. And we can really just do the fun work, mm-hmm. which is getting in rooms with artists and really just like taking care of artists and their art and making sure that uh, it's, you know, exposed to all the opportunity that we can expose it to. Uh, just for me, because I, I've heard you say the term catal- catalog- cataloging, cataloging mm-hmm. quite a bit. When you say cataloging, is this the same as what I've heard of? I've heard of libraries as well for music. Is that the same thing, or is that something different? Yeah, they're pr- they're used pretty interchangeably. I'd say there's probably a little bit of a 
of a of a difference between the two of them when i say cataloging i do mean like our collection of songs mm -hmm. like our our song the collection of songs that we have contracts signed with those song names on them that say that we own x amount of percent of it and they therefore you know have the right to you know um represent it to you know advocate for it to mm -hmm. do what we will it, with it and and get it mm -hmm. to make to make money right, right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> So what are some of the challenges you face? Um, maybe not specific, but there's some things that, that maybe you face every day. There's a certain challenges a week or every month. You say, oh, mm. these are challenges for us. And maybe that could be um, to, let, to let others know before they, they step into maybe submitting their music what challenges you would have to say, well, let's make it easier for you by not doing or this not happening. And when you say challenge, just to clarify, when you say challenges, do you mean as a publisher or just like in general that I see other artists face well actually both of those would be uh, valuable but i'm just saying as a publisher mm -hmm. uh, how is that um something that you can see challenges when music is submitted to you mm, um i would say um oh man what angle do we want to come at this from <laughs> oh, okay. um all, yeah i mean there's so <laughs> many i mean right because i think there's i think there's a massive um uh you know there it's the 80 20 principle right like mm -hmm. the like um yeah. you know like there there really is a very small percentage of of art that kind of like rises its way to the top so you're it's not quality and professionalism of professionalism and when it comes to sound yeah and yeah i guess i mean like i'd say it's more of a chemical reaction i'd say quality is only part of the equation okay. right so yeah. so like the you can have quality and pour all your time into I guess that, that's maybe one of the biggest things is that not enough consideration and it's happened with artists that we've worked with it's we did it we made this very mistake mm -hmm. um and and yeah like like we've made this very mistake many times where it's like you pour so much time and energy and effort because you're thinking solely about that release day you're thinking about when that song's going to come out. Okay, like, and every single thing you do is leading up to that day. And there's nothing thought about about mm -hmm. what that's going to do for you once it's there. Okay, so so what? Like, and maybe you've told a bunch of people, but like, making a song kind of work for you, especially in 2024, is a completely different ball game. And so that's I'd say the biggest mistake is just that fixation on the release day and not thinking at all about okay, great, now it's out. Like, how am I strategically going to get this into people's ears? Right. And, and like, you know, that's not even accounting for the fact that, like, have I made something that people are even going to want in their ears, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's that's a whole other conversation that yeah. we can get into. But, yeah. That, yeah. that, that hit the nail on the head, I think, what, what I was kind of asking. Cool. Because that, that, that's a big challenge. Definitely. Yeah, agreed. Um. So when you're representing songs, I get one of the big questions that we get, and I'm just going to throw it out there because I know one of the things is get to the sync licensing, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so what is that pro like? What is um, the, the process, I guess, or what do you do as a publisher uh, with regards to getting music to say film directors or right. uh, s just because a lot of people may be interested in getting their music in situations where it can be used for yeah. a film, a movie, a video, even for gaming. Yeah. Um, but they don't know how to do it. They, yeah. they don't know what the submission happens. process, perhaps, maybe, to yeah. get well, that started, f maybe. And then the process of how it gets to the end user may be different, but... Like how? What was the process for an artist to submit their music? So right now, in turn, like we're very much in like a we find you stage of our business. Um, uh, so we will if somebody wants to email us stuff, that's awesome. But like we're very much just like we're finding we're finding artists. Okay. Um, I'd say that so to that what I mean by that is like we don't we don't as a publishing company right now have a formalized submission process mm -hmm. to get into our catalog because okay. um, it's just not what we're focused on right now mm -hmm. um, uh, part of our kind of focus for the next like year or so is very much like building up we're kind of also acting as like a label in a way we're building up the catalog of the artists mm -hmm. within our within our circle mm -hmm. and 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 growing that and so don't don't get me wrong we've had a couple emails come in and we take that into consideration but 
um, you know, there are much larger pump publishing companies that you can literally just like go on their website. So most like if you go to like Warner Chapel, for example, like let's just pick a big one, right? Mm -hmm. They have an email address on their um, on their website and you can send you can send your music to their okay. to their um, uh, to their email address. And, and, you know, it'll take a while for them to get back to you because it's a massive conglomerate of a company. But uh, th there that would actually be it, it's actually extremely straightforward if you just want to get right to the co like to the publisher then like most large scale publishers have a submission portal on their on their website that right. you would submit to um i think to ask you because your, your initial question was like what is it like representing the songs mm -hmm. um I, th I think about it a lot like we're just carrying around like a sack of songs and we're just like literally like sometimes virtually sometimes physically like we're just walking into offices with like whoever will let us in their office and being like hi we have these songs here for you. Like, do do you take an interest in any of them? Like, are, I mean, like the conversations are a little more pointed because right. we're talking to them about what work they're working on, asking them about what movie, and then based on the, um, you know, the outcomes of those conversations, do we go, oh, you're looking for this vibe? Okay, well, we have these songs like in this category. Um, would you consider these? And it's just like that initial kind of... Um, like or that that face to face impression that we get by putting in kind of the time and the energy and um you know showing our reputation like showing our reputation which obviously isn't as big as Warner Chapel but just like showing our yeah just like our whatever you want to call it our hard work or or whatever and, yeah, <laughs> yeah right and uh uh th that that gives us like the advantage because you you talk to a human talking to another human if i have a conversation with you you're going to be like, oh, I will check that out. And I'll probably do that before I look at this like big list of virtual submissions that I have because right. I need this song now because this movie needs to be wrapped by this date. Right. And so yeah. it's really a lot of just conversations. And when we say put something in our catalog to represent a song, for us, that's just, we want that in our arsenal so that at, while we're having these conversations, we know that we have administrative control over the song to say, yep, oh, you want the song? Great. Who do, who do I need to contact? Who do I need to clear it with? You don't need to clear it with anybody. Don't worry. This is like, like you just cleared it with us. Good. I'll take the song and use it, right? Versus if you just as an individual go up to um, a music supervisor or anybody kind of in the sync world and let's say you wrote the song with like five people, right? And I don't know if I don't know if you're aware of this, but the way that a publishing royalty split works is like there's it's actually split in half. So a hundred percent of of the publishing is actually um, is actually split into the publisher's share and the um, writer's share. So you as a you as a writer, technically, your if you own twenty percent of a song, you're only entitled to actually like 20 percent of the 50 percent of mm -hmm. that song now if you don't have a publisher then that's that you get all 100 percent, depending on how your writer split agreement worked okay. but the moment that a publisher comes into the picture as a publisher they're entitled to up to 50 percent of that 100 percent mm -hmm. um, and part of what that does though is it, it allows them control to you know do legal things with the song with the mm -hmm. copyrights um without you know it needs to be written in your contract your contract obviously needs to state those things but it allows if, if we've signed a contract as a publisher in that contract we're basically saying like you know we're allowed to do these these and these and these things um to you know put your song in front of these people um and we don't need your permission to do that we just get to as the as the administrative kind of publisher of this of the song and so by having that it, it speeds things along is all is ultimately what the, what the advantage that we get um and so you know you can think about how you know as an artist mm -hmm. <laughs> that's helpful mm -hmm. <laughs> when you still have to do all the things an artist has to do in your day to day to not have to worry about also like you know knocking on the doors of corporate offices to like get your songs in front of people so hopefully that answers your question i think so because uh, you kind of went into the next question it was like how what's the difference with uh, like a, an artist going in saying hi take my music mm -hmm. to a music publisher does it give you a, another ad advantage 
Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd say well one you're just an entity. So as an artist like that is just going to be one of your like you're a legal entity. So so as an artist you're just you are the person that owns that. And so the one of the first things they're going to be thinking is like okay, well who else owns these songs? Like who else is mm-hmm. who else is entangled into this that I'm going to have to deal with to get access to this song. Um the other thing would be that as an artist like you you are only going you are only going to be able to um like the relationship you're going to be able to have unless you plan to just like start, you know, being a like a, a sync factory for that person, which is not likely. You're only going to have that one song or that one set of songs for them to access. Mm-hmm. And so the, you know, potential for depth of the relationship that you can have with that with with that, you know, sync person. Mm-hmm is is really limited because you sure you got your one song and maybe it lands but maybe that same person isn't working on anything right now that needs that and so um we're able to by giving like if i if i walk in the room with like a music supervisor and i say we have all these songs and we have this growing catalog of of songs then i'm able to maintain an uh, an ongoing relationship right that allows me to constantly be giving them new things to look at and listen to mm-hmm. um which just if so if you're then you know inside of that catalog that's going to increase your chances yeah that would be i'd say the biggest the biggest thing that we've observed yeah. thus far in the in it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say because I think some artists have tried to go into music supervisors and they go, the supervisors don't want to listen to them. They get bombarded already. That's the other thing. Yeah. So because they get bombarded, they, they, they're kind of like, okay, I'm not answering you, not answering you. So I'm thinking as a music publisher, they might go, okay, you're a music publisher. I get more bang for my buck with this guy because exactly. it's not just one artist, one set of songs. It's a whole catalog of songs um, with a whole catalog of different artists. And I just I don't even care about the artist per se. I want this certain vibe for this situation. What do you got for me? Exactly. <laughs> kind right. of. Which as an artist, you're just not going to be able to do right. that, right? right. Um, I, uh, maybe maybe there's some kind of artist that can, but I'd like to meet them. Yeah. Right. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, exactly. That's the nail on the head right there. That's that's. That's the biggest thing we've noticed, and you know, yeah. as we get deeper into this industry, maybe maybe I'll come back in here and have even more insight yeah. into yeah. that. But <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> yeah, um, let's talk about your relationships with the artist, like the, from publisher to artist. Sure. Um, what is well, I guess what is it like working with some of these artists? I guess, um, and how do you establish those relationships? Do they, do they just come to you and go? Hi, I got a song. Can you represent me? <laughs> or how does it work? <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it's 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 become a combination. So it started out and I think right now our focus is is representing artists that we also make music with mm-hmm. and that we make music for. Right? So just like, you know, Warner, I'll use Warner again, right? Like Warner has a publishing arm and they also are a label. And so we would like to fo- like operate in the same way where like we are you come to us and we're going to help you make your song and then we're going to help you represent your song. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of like, that is the main, that's what we would like to do mainly. Mm -hmm. However, it's very time intensive. Mm -hmm. It's a very time intensive way because it takes time to make good music, right? So um, by being a publishing company, what that also allows us to do, um, and it's not something we've done yet, but it's something we've looked into is, you know, purchasing, uh, the catalogs of of other artists to put in our catalog to like increase its earning potential mm. um and sometimes through purchasing sometimes through just an artist coming that wants us to represent their their music and their catalog so so it's been a combination but mainly right now our focus is on building up the catalog of people that uh we are we also make music for right yeah so that's how you choose your artists. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there, but don't get me wrong. Like, it's not that we're closed off to the idea of representing. Um, but I think that for us, if we make that music, then we endorse it because we made it and we're confident in it. Like, we're not gonna we're not gonna make something that we don't really think has the potential, or we wouldn't we wouldn't make it, mm-hmm. um, right? And so we're super intentional about that. Whereas if somebody comes from the outside and we've not had a hand in making any of that then like you know then it's it's gonna have to basically feel as good to us as the as the music that we make uh, like as a as a label because 
because if it isn't, then it's not really going to do anything good for us on our catalog, if that makes sense. Yeah, like you want to feel like you have a little bit of almost like ownership yes. yourself. Yeah, we want to own it. We do not want to represent songs just yeah. just to get a percentage of somebody's royalties, right? Because if it doesn't matter, if we don't believe in the song, if we don't feel good about it, then it's it's there's no point for us, for and sure. And it sounds like to me you're actually taking a journey with the artist. You're not just taking their music. Yes. And I think that's really different. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, it's not. It, we're not interested in just like owning shares of somebody's mm. of somebody's music at all. Like we want to, we we're in it together. Is how, is really how we're moving in, into this into this world. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's comforting. Yeah, it is. I think it is. That's comforting to know because, I think as as we get to know a lot of artists that are looking for help, <laughs> right, and mm-hmm. and what they're doing and and help in their journey. They like knowing that there is someone that's with them along the way. Yeah, it's not this big crowd. Uh, Travis, uh, big space, you know, between, hey, you wrote a song, now get it out there. Like, mm. you know what I mean? It's like you actually have someone that's going, hey, we're going to walk with you on this one. Yes. And mm. let's help you get it publicized. Let's help you get it um, 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 in the hands of some other people who will be interested in using your music in film and movies and, and exactly. so forth. Right. Exactly. So I think that's kind of cool. Now, I, I do want to ask this because I, I know that because of the trend of indie artists, yes. there's the some people will self-publish, meaning mm-hmm. they'll put their music, say, on YouTube. Um, I think that's one of the ones that you can do for free, like YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or something like that. Yep. How does that affect the publishing side for you? Does right. that is that a way that attracts um a music publisher like as you said you're in the position of more looking out for mm-hmm. or is that kind of a well they've already self published so we have nothing to do with them no that's a that's a great question yeah i think um it's kind of like the term producer um it's really vague and has so many uses of it and me saying that i'm a music producer could mean something very different to somebody who's in the hip hop world versus somebody who's mm-hmm. in um, film right, yeah, and and yeah. what I actually am as a producer looks nothing like that mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to, you know, I'm not at all comparing myself to him because <laughs> that is a dangerous game. But uh, the late, unfortunately, uh, Quincy Jones, for example, right? Like mm-hmm. the way that Quincy Jones produced is like the way that I got inspired to produce. Mm-hmm. Where um, Quincy Jones is a band as a, was a band leader and like a very talented musician himself. But then instead of directing that into using an instrument, he um, uh, decided to kind of go behind the glass and and direct others to create a vision that was beyond what he could ever do with his own hands. Right. Mm. Um, and he did and time and time again. And. There's, you know, countless example of examples that came up after Quincy Jones. But if, you know, you're in the hip hop world and you say, I'm a producer, you make beats. And sure, I can make a beat, but that's not what you're paying me to do as a producer. Right. right? Um, it's, it's very, very different. Uh, and so on the publishing side, I would kind of look at it similarly where a pub, what a publisher had to be in the in the like the 20th century was someone who essentially platformed you. Because there was no other way to do it. Mm. Like you, you needed a publisher because you needed a, a corporate body to to pay the upfront cost of getting your CD print, like getting your CDs, um, you know, like uh, burned or getting your your vinyls, um, you know, like pressed, um, mm. and and so forth and so forth. You, you needed that. You know, and it works the same. It is no different than a book publisher or anything. You needed someone to to put it on the platform because it was just an unbearable burden to do yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's different now because um, anybody can be a publisher. Hmm. You're right, and that is scary for like a big conglomerate that you know kind of established itself through this like really through the very like antiquated and old way of of doing of of being a publisher but uh we didn't come into it with thinking that we were ever going to be that Mm -hmm. from the from the get-go um so so it's it's actually kind of liberating for us because we don't care how you distribute it Mm-hmm. The music, which was a big part of publishing, was how you distribute it. Right. Um, we don't care, really, um, especially right now. It's not like we as a company have the means or even desire to distribute the music. 
we just want to, like you said, represent and advocate. So um, honestly, I'm, uh, we've been finding that what it does is it just it, it gives us more flexibility because we have none of the overhead yeah. and we just get to do we just get to do the advocating part um which is the time consuming part still mm. right mm. right yeah. um it, it's actually really cost effective to so, so to speak to like putting your song on youtube or putting your song like um uh you know we encourage all of our artists to release with distro kit which is like the pretty much the best like music um distributor available to the public um uh, and it, it, truly, it's it's very bare bones. Kind of like the style of design on the website is kind of like Amazon. Like it's super bare bones, <laughs> but it's great. Mm -hmm. It does exactly what you need it to do. Um, and so it's like I was actually just talking with an artist today about uh, about it because he's getting into he's get he's gonna release his. We're talking about production and stuff, and he's gonna release his uh, first few songs. And so I was, you know, we were having a budget conversation, and I was telling him that he has to be weary about the cost of like things like distribution, still a cost. You gotta factor that into your budget uh, when you're thinking about investing into a song. And we crack open the pricing page and it's like $22 a year or something like that to like, uh, to like just be a member of DistroKid. And then I think it's like, I think it's like 40 bucks to, you pay this like one time fee so that even if your credit card cancels like on your like membership, your subscription, they won't like, delete it from all of the platform like your song from all the platforms it's like a legacy fee but so when you do that when you when you s submit through a distributor you get uh your song on tiktok you get your it puts your song on instagram put your song on youtube and so yes and it in that sense of the word you're you've published yourself mm -hmm. right um but cool let them do that that's great mm -hmm. the the part that takes time is advocating for the song the part that takes time is like um some of the other benefit, benefits of being affiliated with a publisher, which is like, as a writer, as a creator, you want to be connected to other creators. So mm -hmm. you get the benefit if you're on the roster of, of, of a good publisher, then they're constantly putting you in rooms with other with their other people on the rosters because they want more songs, right? right. Yeah. And they get to <laughs> they get to have a cut of the song because they put you two in a room together. And so those are the things that really. Are, excite us about being a publisher mm -hmm. the the distribution part for us is like it's there and we know like you know if someone wants something distributed that's fine but our focus is really mainly sync and and uh and and the administrative like representation hmm. so it actually narrows it down yeah I, I was actually just wondering you but can i get into a bit more about sync licensing because sure. I, I like to ask okay if an artist or someone a musician who wants to really get into sync licensing in itself what would you recommend for them um, as an artist to how they go about approaching their musical, is it gonna be, um, do they have to have lyrics? Do they have to have just instrumental? Yeah. Does it have to have certain way that it's put together? For, uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think there's a lot of different like um, uh, categories of sync. So it does depend on what kind of sync you're wanting, but I'm gonna assume probably most people like, any sync, <laughs> any sync the face, right? Is yeah. probably what you want to do. So if if we're looking at it through that lens, um, I'd say like start making things um, and just start making a lot of things, uh, because the problem is like as an artist, from a stylistic standpoint, if you're gonna make sync, you need to you need to understand how to write in a mood, and you need to understand mm. how to write generically enough that you is, you can have lyrics. Instrumental is great, but some like a lot of people, like, especially now, like you think of any like big Netflix movie or anything. There's tons of songs with lyrics in them, right? Mm -hmm. But then the the key is that your lyrics can't be so lyrical that they distract from whatever the scene is, right? They have mm -hmm. to be kind of generic enough and singing about like things that are ambiguous, right? Well, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. it, it, yeah, it, because the moment you start to say details, right? Like, I don't know, like street names and the way you felt on a certain day at a certain time, like the moment you start to get specific, that it, it pulls a listener out of whatever they're watching, right? right? You gotta be saying like very general concepts in your lyricism. So that's like a big thing if you want to fit into the vibe of a scene. Um, and you know, like there obviously is that threshold is different for like a moodier scene than it is for like 
a Ford F-150 commercial, right? right. Yes. That's yes. super generic. And then they want it to be general for a different reason because they don't want the focus taken away from their advertisement, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to, they want you to feel like you want to buy a Ford yeah. F-150, right? So you got to <laughs> play that game. Uh, so make a lot of things, uh, make a lot of things and get really, really good at pumping things out. The other thing is that if you're, if you as an artist do go the, like we're, publishing company so we're taking music in your catalog and we're representing it and going you know knocking on doors uh, if you are part of us if you are part of a sync agency where it's exclusively sync um, and you're a writer like signed to that sync agency um, a lot of them fo are uh, function in in the way of sending you briefs every week for mm -hmm. example where you're signed you know you whether it's a membership you pay or like it's an actual like you have some kind of contract with them and they'll send you a brief and be like all right we've gotten notice that we need five songs that feel like this artist for this kind of scene submit your stuff by Friday right. and right. and you you just need to be able to make it fast <laughs> mixed and mastered and send it off and maybe they'll pick it and I have I have thoughts about that but yeah. but because that sucks right like that's a <laughs> that's a and like don't get me wrong, like, okay, like, you send that in, you send that into the hat, they pick it out, and if you win, like, maybe that's, like, $5,000 in your pocket, and that's great. Yeah, but I've, I've heard, um, someone mentioned, you can make, make, make sure this is a good thing to think about. Whenever you're asking for um, percentages, um, when it comes to the song you submit, it's like, a 50-50 is the best way to go because there's less risk for the publisher. But you could make more money from less streams with a 50-50 instead of you doing 20-80 when you get no, no, they won't push it. Are we talking st uh, streams? No, well, not streams, for sale, whatever, sales for new clients, whatever that you have, so. Um, oh, sorry, we're, sorry, sorry, are you talking about as a publisher? Yeah, if the publisher takes a deal and says, okay, um, like I heard one guy say that I did a 50-50 split on one of my songs mm -hmm. and I got $360. I did a 20% split on the other one, I kept the 80, I only got a hundred bucks because I didn't, I wasn't, they weren't pushing it as much because they weren't going to make as much money off it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're yeah. talking, but so you're just talking about like the sync in a, in a, in a cat, in a, cause for syncing, most of the time, like where you're going to make money isn't from a stream or from a frequency of play. It's going to be from a placement that is X amount of dollars that they're going to pay you as a licensing fee. Um, so the free, like the the frequency that you're making is is like I, the way the example you're giving sounds more like stream related. Where like uh, if we have yeah, someone maybe. in our catalog that, you know, yeah, we're gonna take fifty fifty on this song, and you know, we're gonna it's but it's only gonna get twenty thousand streams versus like a different cut. Like that that we can talk about that streaming, mm -hmm. but a placement is like that's a one time fee. That's like right. a I don't know, you know, they won't quantify how many streams it gets, but that's just simply like, we're going to pay you 10 grand to allow us to put this in the movie. Mm -hmm. That's what I have the budget for. Are you cool with that? Yes or no. And it's our job to like advocate if we can to get that higher. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then out of that fee, we get, depending on what our contract stipulates, a, f a cut from mm -hmm. that fee, right? Mm -hmm. So if the artist owns 50-50... Um, then they'll get they'll get five grand a week at five grand kind of thing. Mm. Um, but yeah. sorry, that, that it's your, I, th I just think your question was kind of about streaming a little well, more. Well, no, I I was uh, I don't even know. I think it was to do with um, getting placements because uh, the the way he worded it was yeah. if, if you okay. give more percentage to the um, whatever the platform, they will push your song more. Oh, so I th you might be talking about agencies then. For, yeah, okay, right. that sounds, yeah, that okay. sounds more like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there's a bunch of different variations of it. Like there's also, um, there's a couple agencies, I, I won't name them, but uh, where you can, you just kind of like, you they pay you like a, a fee every month to just keep on filling your profile with like music that then their subscribers get to use like and have the license to use because they subscribe to the platform mm -hmm. um and you know it's like how much do you want to sell your soul for it like there's yeah, yeah. there's various right. degrees yeah, of yeah. that yeah yeah i think i understand now what yeah. you're saying sorry yeah. about that well, there's a whole lot of levels yeah there <laughs> certainly is so um, artists are looking to get noticed um, by a publisher like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, what, what advice, or maybe that's not the best question, but what, what would be the best uh, 
action for them to start to consider? Yeah, well, I'd say, so definitely being in, con I, I think like, here's the thing. I think that when you're in that early stage of your career, um, you're susceptible to so much uh, misdirection and it's inevitable. And I think like embracing that rather than getting frustrated with that is like really important because um, some of the misdirection is simply just chance and some of this, some of the misdirection is actually like a sign that you need to reevaluate aspects of, of, of what you're doing, right? So I say that in the context of if you're an artist and you've released maybe a bunch of music or maybe you, you just started releasing some music and it's either not getting a lot of streams or maybe you had one song that got a few streams and now you're not getting any songs that you're getting streams. Like whatever scenario you're in as an artist, you're reaching out to people. You think you're like doing your due diligence and you're sending emails. So first half of that answer would be send emails. Definitely just like make yourself known to people. Well, let's say you do, and they come back, and they, you've just routinely gotten, like, I'm not interested. Sorry, we're not interested, blah, 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 Because that's kind of, like, where that, that's that brick wall that some artists find themselves. Well, they're not interested for one of two reasons. They're not interested because they're genuinely just, like, not looking for something at that moment. Mm -hmm. Fine. That's actually just, like, a real, that, that's a possibility. The other reason is that they're politely declining because something about your brand or something about your music isn't meeting the standard that they would even need to consider, like like considering you, right? right. Um, and it's so frustrating because like, how do you know that in a world where no one's gonna tell you that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no one's mm -hmm. gonna say that to you to your face, right? Yeah. Um, and so as an artist, like practicing kind of just humility in that, not to the point of like a detriment, you don't wanna just like, practice so much humility that you think you're bad and give up. Um, <laughs> but to always be taking that misdirection and really like reflecting on it and trying to always make sure that you are, um, that you have all your ducks in a row before you, before you knock on the door of somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, accepting that you could still knock on the door and they turn away. You keep, the persistence is also a factor there. But mm -hmm. so brand could be one thing, right? Um, a lot of music supervisors, publishers, um, l I mean, labels, right? Like, uh, r really, like all three of those of those bodies. Like, the, the music supervisors maybe less so, but it's uh, it's still a factor, and I'll explain why. They care about your brand. Like, if they're going to platform your music um, in any way, whether it's platforming it by, you know, yeah, maybe they are distributing it, or they're just going to platform it by putting, you know, putting it in front of opportunities, right? what that music kind of relates back to is fine. So if you, maybe you made, maybe you made a great song, but your Instagram is just like, you know, a, like a, like a row of three of like, and, and, and like, you know, eight, your grid is like eight pictures of your dog, right? <laughs> like that matters. And it, and it sucks that it does. It mm -hmm. really does. And mm -hmm. I think we've all to a certain degree, like <laughs> gripped with the fact that that matters, but it matters. Right. And so like, y and you're not going to, your your like, you know, um, uh, kind of stubbornness or willingness to dig your heels in isn't gonna change the tide right, <laughs> of that yeah. of that yeah. tsunami. Like it's it it matters, right? And so your brand is really important, and 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 it doesn't have to be convoluted. You don't need to post a lot of videos every day. It can be just as simple as like a few good pictures of you, and just like some uh, rather than just like w just one picture of your dog. Just one, mm. right? <laughs> and and then like and then like a couple of you like you re released a song like if you release a song and there's no song and there's no video of you as an artist playing your song, like think about that for a second, right? Like you gotta think about what it would be like for somebody to just come and find you, and what would they see and what would the impression they get? It doesn't have to be extensive. It's okay to be minimal, but if they don't getting if they're not getting it, you're not a dog, right? Like so if they're <laughs> like that, if that's what the impression is that you're giving, that's also what the publisher that you knocked on the door of um, saw and used as a factor in their decision to decline you, right? right. Um, right. And so brand is a big thing. Uh, I would say also just like, you know, and it's this is the worst one, this is the toughest one, can sting the most sometimes, but it's like the quality of your music. And um, I say that not in, an, an, not in a subjective way. Mm. I mean like objectively, because as a publisher, if I'm gonna represent your music, we kind of touched on this a, a little bit ago, but like it's gotta stand, bes it's gotta stand beside the stuff that I'm also like gunning for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't have, it, and 
I can't have a song that I'm like, I'm like, yeah, what, what about this vibe? Do you like this vibe? And then how about this one? And then there's like a, a, a very like perceivable drop in quality, um, whether that's quality in just like the production or quality in the technical side, like the mix and stuff. And so, you know, that's also something that you just have to reassess and reevaluate, and and that's a difficult thing to do. And there's no easy answer. And we could talk for a whole night on on the ways that I would recommend. I would say that like to keep it short, what you, what I would say is like you can put your song like anybody has like iTunes or whatever on their computer, like not Spotify, like something that, but maybe Spotify. I mean, like anything where you can create a playlist of music, and use yourself and someone who you only vaguely know as like kind of a point of reference and put your song beside the songs that you were thinking about when you made that song and see how it stands up and see how it stacks up and be brutally honest and maybe you know we can be a little blind to our own art mm, so maybe yeah. maybe it's not something you notice so you need to you need to put it in front of a few people who don't care enough about you to be nice to you <laughs> right and 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 that's how you know right because yeah, someone just because someone doesn't care enough about you to be nice to you doesn't mean that they don't they're not a bad they're they're not a bad person but they just there's they have no stake in having to say this is so nice right <laughs> and so like give you an honest <laughs> opinion right yeah, yeah and that's yeah. what you need right yeah, and and yeah. then if you if you do see that that's a tough pill to swallow and if so if you can get that pill down it's possible to get to make it better but if you're if you haven't even swallowed the pill and you're just like sitting on sitting on music you're like this is great this is awesome i make great art and <laughs> yeah. and then you keep putting it in front of doors and getting turned down it's like a, it could not be that but you can't you can't take that out of the equation as a possibility right so when you first approach a sync licensing organization company should you like give them all the songs you've written, or just give them a few songs that you've written, or what do they what do they like whenever they first have a submission? Uh, so sorry, so you're talking as a publishing company? Oh, oh, yeah, well, or as if an I was artist? Going for sync licensing, like if you're going to a sync licensing, company, if I'm going, would you say to them, "This is my artist, and this is what they," and you throw a whole bunch at them, or do you say a couple of songs? Or well, honestly, I, we just we talk about what they're working on. Okay, so you want to find out what they need. Yeah. And you see if you can meet that yeah, need. Yeah, like, because uh. it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like, they've got enough to worry about. So, like, I, me just being like, do you, do you like it? Like, do you right. like anything, right? Yeah. Like, they're not going to respond to that. <laughs> yeah. they, they want to, like, like, it's like anything. You're really, like, you're coming and you're selling somebody something, right? So, like, I'm walking in and I'm actually talking about you. I want to know about the film you're working on. That's I want to understand about, like, what, you know, what is, what's the vibe? And yeah. then when I hear, like, they obviously know why we're talking, but so then when I hear, like, oh, like, yeah, and we have this scene, you know, we're, that we're working on, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, what's the vibe you're going for in that scene? Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Like. Because I just happen to have, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that. It's easier selling it too. It's easier selling it, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. And so again, like getting into our catalog and us growing a catalog has a lot more about just having those at our disposal mm -hmm. rather than just like inundating somebody with anything, right? right. Um, yeah. That's wise. Um, I had a question and now I lost it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I pulled it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess one of the questions I could be I could have from an artist's perspective is is it worth it to have more than one? Like, thinking of your example of an artist writing for a particular sync organization, yeah. and um, that could either work or not work for them, is it worth it for them to, I guess, connect with more than one sync kind of company, um, or more than one music publisher? Like, is, is that worth it, or is that a conflict of interest? Uh, definitely. I mean, you know, like as a as an artist, so on the on the sync side, like you usually these sync companies, like you can have sync focused publishers, and then you can have sync agencies. The sync agencies are usually the the agencies that are plugged into the film world. They will maybe get in on your song if they pick it, but they're really just like it's just a hub that they're mm -hmm. that they're using, and they're just sending out briefs the people who are affiliated with the agency and are you know have the privilege of getting the email get the briefs submit the things and then if it gets picked they get paid mm -hmm. and that agency takes so a cut of just so everybody pays. know a brief is an expectation of what they're oh sorry yeah, yeah. so that's for. what i was mentioning yeah. earlier yeah. so that's like that's like we need three songs with this mood 
you know, um, Mariah Carey style. I, we need three songs that sound like, or we need one song that sounds like Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas. We need one song that sounds like, you know, Jingle Bells. Like we need, and and then, and then you make you make that and submit that. That's that's a brief. A brief yeah. Yeah. Um, so so that that's like the the one side of it, and then the publishing side being like. Um, uh, sorry, your question was. Um, should I just want to make sure I'm answering your question. Should they have should 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 an artist be connected to more than one publisher, right. more than one sync? So yeah. Company? So from an agency standpoint, unless you have some exclusivity deal, like you can you you can absolutely be connected to different agencies. On a publishing side, it's pretty similar. Like you could you could sign your catalog depending on the size of the publisher. You could sign your catalog or only part of your catalog to a publisher. You could just, and then another, if you have another deal with another publisher, you could sign. So it's, it's not really answering your question. Like it really is case dependent. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's no harm in, in diversifying your connections. It's just that every connection that you have is a relationship to manage. So mm -hmm. you do eventually reach like a threshold of just like, you know how many how many of those people are you really gonna like sure. be be able to like keep happy um yeah. and so that's the challenge that you get to yeah uh so there's pros and cons to doing that right um i wouldn't say, i wouldn't recommend it especially as an artist starting out mm -hmm. i wouldn't say that like spreading yourself that thin is the better way to go mm -hmm. um right. it, it, honestly when you're starting out i just think Knocking on as many doors as possible, exploring as many options as possible is good, but not actually like you know getting into bed with mm. uh, that many uh, that many companies. I don't think is is mm. is the best move forward for you. Yeah, I think what's one thing I'm learning about all of this is the value of, and you've said it several times, relationship. Mm. It's all about relationship, and it's all about, and I'm going to use my, my little phrase here, you focusness. And when I say that, I mean, it's very easy to go with me focus. I got all these songs. Do you like them? Do you yes. want them? Compared to what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can uh, like what what is the need? What is, what is the focus right now? And how can we serve this focus? Mm -hmm. That's everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that makes the big difference yeah. in any yeah. relationship, whether it's with a publisher, with uh, with a producer, um, with anybody. Well, really. I would think I would think actually where it extends to, and you know, I bet I bet that the people the people who are starting out will experience this. Uh, it, it's also with your fan, the relationship with your fans. Yeah. Just just because you made a song doesn't mean that I like that I have to listen to it and like it. Mm -hmm. yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Right. But, but the, yes. the like kind of <laughs> the typical promo, like, like approach just is this, like, I just poured, you know, X amount of thousands of dollars into the song and, you know, and however many hours, live, right? Like <laughs> go stream it. And it's like, but really when you think, when consider, when you consider what you're being asked, right? Like, yeah, if you created something that is going to be the next song that I that I stream that I you know belongs perfectly in my whatever playlist or that I stream mm -hmm. all the time, awesome. You, you just you just did something for me actually. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if if you are trying to promote your song just simply by saying go stream this because I made it, <laughs> uh, and and it's not actually something that somebody wants to stream then like you are it's actually the reverse it's not it's it's me focus not you focus that's right it. that's um, it and that's a tough thing to do it don't is. get me wrong that's a can of that's a can of worms but it like it is <laughs> it is but it, i go i sit there and think about it like that's how a lot of us would as artists we go we made something we're so proud of it yeah. try yeah. it and try you it you should it's be proud baby. of it yeah. you know exactly. that's okay <laughs> but that doesn't mean that i have to be proud of it exactly <laughs> you know exactly I mean? that's my that's up to me <laughs> yeah Wait, can i take it back now we, we were talking earlier about the journey and yeah. you actually are hands-on when it comes to helping writing mm -hmm. and creating the song itself because you're an artist yourself mm -hmm. Um, I've asked you to sing a song, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. And I want the people to just, just to understand that the the the, the, the Duncan is coming from a place of, a, of an artist, and uh, it's it's not just um, someone sitting in an office uh, pushing product. So um, I wanted you to, if you would, uh, you know, 
give us one, a selection of one of your songs. So yeah, we'll yeah. that together. Would love to, yeah. Because um, you're all wondering, why is he sitting at a piano? <laughs> well, now you know. Because, because he can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, I'd love to. Um, uh, yeah, th this this song I had the privilege of writing with uh, a really really talented uh, worship leader in uh, the GTA. His name's Jeremy Tozer, um, and so actually on the on the the album that we released that this is on, you can stream it. It's called Foundation on uh, Spotify uh, and or Apple Music. It's anywhere we use DistroKid, <laughs> um, and. Uh, uh, very very cool experience. Um, I write both secular music and and worship music with people, and um, he's yeah he, he sings this, but we very much wrote the song together. And so, uh, yeah, this song's called Savior. Um, pretty simple in structure, but uh, uh, really powerful. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we do it at my church a lot. They love it, <laughs> which is cool. So, uh, yeah, I'll I'll play the song now. <laughs> awesome. It's so good to know my Savior lives That heaven and earth respond to Him It's so good to know He lives, He lives And so let the same power that raised Christ from the dead be the same power that lives in me so break these chains set me free you give life more abundantly oh Lord I give you everything Oh, it's so good to know my Savior lives That heaven and earth respond to Him It's so good to know He lives, He lives More abundantly to know my Savior lives, that heaven and earth respond to Him. It's so good to know He lives, He Amen. Thank you so much, Duncan, for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is so awesome. If you want to know more about uh, Duncan being the music publisher, or you want to be him as a producer, or you want him to write songs with you, or whatever, <laughs> you know, give us a give us a, well, send us send us a message, and we'll make sure we'll get that contact information over to you, or we'll put it in uh, the chat. Well, you have uh, a website, right? Uh, we have an Instagram right now. We actually Instagram. don't. We've been completely underground. Um, I have a website. Uh, if you want to go to duncanreadmusic.com, mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of see and you can get in contact with me for production stuff. Um, but uh, no, right now, our, as our, our publishing company just has a, an Instagram page um, that we like just fired up. Like we haven't really been public at all. Mm -hmm. We've just been kind of like under relationship building for the past year mm -hmm. um what's website the instagram what's the name of uh gemini music group gemini music group go there and like it to death that'd be so cool <laughs> yeah, thank you what if they don't want to <laughs> <laughs> you don't have you to do it no. anyway you don't have to do it <laughs> yeah gemini that's awesome. yeah i hope i hope that uh was able to shed some light on uh 
um, yeah, just what is a very <laughs> elusive world yeah. that we are even still learning, you know, a lot about. And mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, happy to come on here and, and chat about. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's tough for some artists to navigate through uh, a lot of stuff they're doing on their own. And so to have uh, that insight is something that helps them to at least go, oh, maybe I'll look into that, you know? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Re look into publishers. It's the kind of thing, right? Like, w if you're just starting out, though, just focus on making the best music that you well, can. You gotta. I make. was just about to ask him. There's one key advice you would have. That's it. Yeah, just, it just really is on, that. Yeah. And objectively, right? Like yeah. uh, the the best music, like that that actually adds value, right? Wow. And like like equating the time and energy you put into like the value you're giving people is a hard one, both emotionally and like realistically. But um, there are ways to measure that. I think um, you know others have done it, and so. Focus on that. Get good at that. Because as a as a publisher, I want to sign somebody who is going to keep pumping those out, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll know the next time we post a video. Thanks for having us. It was nice being had. <laughs> <laughs> good night. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. -bye. <laughs>